Okay. He keeps begging what he's yet he what he has yet to prove that only the Father is God. So if Jesus is the image of God the Father, he can't be God. Okay, let's see. Let's see if that's true. Here you go. Colossians 1, 15 to 17, right? Let's see. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Yes, you're right. If you're the image of someone, you're not that someone. But who says that Jesus is God the Father? The God that Jesus images, the God who's invisible, that Jesus makes visible, is the Father. How do we know? Because of Colossians 1, 13 and 14. So yes, young, dumb, stillborn, Jesus is not God the Father. He's the image of God the Father. And therefore, he's not the God whom he images, but that God is the Father. And unless you can prove that the Father alone is God, you're begging the question and humiliating yourself. Okay? Let's see what it says. Jesus is the image of God. He's the image of who? Here it is, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son the son of his love, in whom, in union with Christ, we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. Now we see why this poses no problem for us. Because the God who is invisible, the God whom he makes visible, the God whom he images is the Father. So thank you for proving Jesus is not the Father, which Trinitarian denies that. Either guy is stupid and he doesn't know what he's refuting or he's dishonest because he knows what we believe and he still straw mans it as opposed to steel man it. So yes, Jesus is not God the Father, but he perfectly images God the Father for whatever the Father is, he is the firstborn of all creation. Now, does being the firstborn of all creation means that he's the first created? Well, hold on. Let's read the rest of it because Paul will tell you what firstborn means and does not mean. Are we ready? Are we ready? Paul will now tell you what firstborn means and does not mean. Here you go. Don't stop at 15. Read 16 and 17. Even a blind man can see. It doesn't mean he's the first one created. Here. The firstborn of all creation. And then Paul explains. Paul, why is he the firstborn of all creation? For, because. You see that word for? That means Paul is going on to explain why he's the firstborn. He's the firstborn because in him, meaning the creative life-giving energy, the creative life-giving power, the power necessary to create all things resides in him. In him. That power that is required to create all things is in Christ, possessed by Christ. For in him, all things were created. Notice, all, not some. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through him, because the Father also created with the Son and the Spirit. Father with the Son and Spirit created all things. And for him, now pay attention. Not only did the Father create all things with the Son and the Spirit, not only is that power that is needed to create all things residing in Christ, He possesses that power by nature, but all things were created for Him. Pay attention. He is before all things. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So Paul just said, all creation was made by Christ, through Christ, and for Christ. All creation is sustained by Christ, and Christ is, present tense verb, before all creation. Now, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? If Jesus is before all things, meaning all creation, and if the Father used Jesus to create all things, all creation, and sustain all things, all creation,
Does all creation exist for the Son? How can Christ be part of that set? Did he create himself? Is he sustaining himself? If you are before all creation, because all things means all creation, and if you're the one the Father used to create all creation and to preserve all creation, that means you were there before all creation came into being, which means you're not part of all things, all creation. And if you're not part of it, that means you're uncreated. Unless this moron thinks Jesus created himself and sustains himself. And to further prove that this means Jesus is God, notice it says all things were created through him and for him. Now watch here. If you believe Paul does not contradict the Old Testament, young dumb. Okay, now here we got a problem, mister. Okay, watch here. If you believe... Paul does not contradict the Old Testament. Then explain this to me, sir. Okay. Watch here. Isaiah 43, 6 to 7. It says in Colossians 1, 16, all things were created through the Son for the Son. It's for him. And he sub sustains all things. All things are kept together in union with Christ. It is Christ who preserves all things. Okay, now watch here. Isaiah 43, 6 to 7. Watch dark Pluto. Follow with me. I will say to the north, this is Jehovah speaking, give up and to the south, do not withhold, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who's called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So Jehovah created all things for his own glory and possession, not for someone else's. All right. That was Isaiah 43, 6 to 7. Isaiah 43, 20 to 21. Isaiah 43, 20 to 21. Watch here. Isaiah 43, 20 to 21. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. Okay, wait. Jehovah says, I'm the one who sustains all things. I'm the one who preserves the wild beasts and animals and give them their sustenance, and I su sustain my people. But Colossians 1 117 says it's in Christ, in union with Christ, in relationship to Christ, Christ's relationship to creation, that all things are preserved. Now watch 21, though. The people whom I form for myself, that they might declare my praise. Okay, I'm really confused here, brethren. Isaiah 43, 6 to 7, 20, 21 says, Jehovah created all things for his glory, created Israel for his pleasure, created Israel for himself, not for someone else, and he sustains his people and the animals. Isaiah 43, 6 to 7, 20 to 21. That's 21. But Paul says, the Father used Jesus to create all things for Jesus, they exist for Jesus, and Jesus sustains all things together. So you want me to believe that Paul is now contradicting the Old Testament? Because if Jesus is not God, Paul just contradicted the Old Testament because Jehovah created all things by a creature for a creature and using a creature to sustain all things. Does that mean Jesus also created and sustains himself? Well, hold on. Maybe that wasn't clear. Isaiah 44, 24. Isaiah 44, 24. Watch this. Thus says the Lord, that's Jehovah, Yehovah, your Redeemer who formed you from the womb, Isaiah 44, 24. I am Yehovah, the Lord, who made all things. Okay, guys, pay attention. Here, Job says, I made all things. Who stretched out the heavens alone. Who spread out the earth. Who was with me. Did you catch it? Job is saying, I made all things. I stretched out the heavens alone. And when I spread the earth, there was no one with me. But if Jesus is a creature, Paul just contradicted this. Because Paul is saying, the Father used the Son to create all things. To stretch out the heavens. To spread out the earth. 
And the Father used the Son to create all things for the Son, so that if the Son is not Jehovah, that means Jehovah wasn't alone. He wasn't by himself because there was a creature there helping him. You see the problem? If Jesus created all things for himself and he preserves all things alive, then he was there before all things existed. That means he was there before creation. That means he's uncreated. But if Jesus is a creature, does that mean he created himself and he's sustaining himself? And if Jesus is not Jehovah, then Paul just contradicted Isaiah 43, 6 to 7, Isaiah 43, 20 to 21, Isaiah 44, 24, where it says Jehovah preserves all things alive, created all things for himself, for his own glory, and did it alone. So did we now establish what firstborn does not mean? So we can wrap it up. Did we now establish what firstborn does not mean? It does not mean he's the first one created. Why? Because Paul went on to explain in 16 and 17 why he's the firstborn. He's the firstborn because God the Father used him to create all creation, to preserve all creation, and create all creation for the possession of the Son. So then what does it mean? The term firstborn is used with the meaning of the heir who owns the inheritance and the one who's supreme, superior, preeminent over everything. So the term firstborn also means the following. The firstborn, the heir, the inheritor, okay? And it also means... Firstborn also has, and I'm going to show it to you from David. Firstborn also means the one who is supreme, preeminent over others. Okay? Let me prove that to you, right? And I just want to show you that's what it means in Colossians. Let me show it to you. Psalm 89, 19 to 20. Psalm 89, 19 to 20. Psalm 89, 19 to 20. Talking about David. Of old thou didst speak in a vision to thy faithful one and say, I have set the crown upon one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David, pay attention, David, my servant. It's all about David, the entire section. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Now, remember this. David was not the first king of Israel. Saul was. David was second. And according to 1 Samuel 16, David was the youngest of Jesse's eight sons. So he wasn't the first son born. He was the youngest of eight sons. And he wasn't the first king. Saul was king before him. Okay? But then look what God says about David in the same psalm. That was Psalm 89, 19 to 20. Now notice 26 to 27. Psalm 89, 26 to 27. Ready? David is called what by God? He, David, shall cry to me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn. But he's not the first king. He's not even the first king of Israel. Saul was. Nor is he the firstborn son. He's the youngest of eight sons born to Jesse. But nonetheless, God says, He's still my firstborn. And here's the explanation. The highest of the kings of the earth. Do you see what firstborn means here? The one who's supreme, preeminent over others, having the highest position over others, not the one born first. We got that? So why is Jesus the firstborn? Because he's superior, infinitely greater than all creation, and he owns all creation, and because of that, he's firstborn, in that, as firstborn of creation, that means he owns it, that's Colossians 1.16, all things were created for him, and being the creator who gives life to creation, he's infinitely superior to creation, so he's firstborn in terms of being preeminent, supreme over creation, that's all it means. In fact, that's what Paul tells you it means when you read Colossians 1.18. Paul tells you that's what he means. 
Colossians 1.18. Here it is. Colossians 1.18. Here it is. Colossians 1.18. He tells you in 18 what it means for Jesus to be firstborn. Colossians 1.18. He is the head of the body, the church. So who's our head? Who owns us? Who commands us? Who sustains us? Jesus. He is the beginning, meaning the cause. He is the beginning, the cause, the source of the new creation. And he's the firstborn from the dead, meaning the one who conquered death, who's preeminent over death, who destroyed death, who's supreme over death. Why? That in everything, he might be preeminent. There you go. So Paul, why is he firstborn? He's preeminent, superior to everything, superior to all creation. Why? Because he created it, he owns it, he sustains it. He's supreme over the church. Why? Because he's the head of the church who gives life to the church who brought into existence. He is firstborn from the dead, meaning he's the one who's preeminent from the dead. Why? Because he conquered death, destroyed death by rising immortal. So firstborn doesn't mean the first one created. It means the one who's preeminent, supreme, superior. And I'm going to give you a translation that best captures it. One second. Let me show you the best translation of this. Okay. Give me a second, and then we're done. Okay. What I think is the best translation that captures it. Here it is. Here you go. You ready? Good news translation. Watch this. Good news translation. Look how it translates the term firstborn. Okay. Here you go. And I'll give you one more. Okay. Watch here. And we're done, brethren. Hope you learn. Christ is the visible likeness of the invisible God. He's the firstborn son, superior to all created things. Now explains why. Why? For through him, God created everything in heaven and on earth, the seen and the unseen, things including spiritual powers, lords, rulers, and authorities. God created the whole universe through him and for him. Christ existed before all things, and in union with him, all things have their proper place. He is the head of his body, the church. He is the source of the body's life. That's what it means, beginning. He is the firstborn son who was raised from the dead in order that he alone might have the first place in all things. There you go. Let me give you another translation. That was good news translation. Let me give you another one. Ready? Let me give you another one. This one is an amazing one because you'll believe, believe it or not, it's the International Children's Bible. And yet it's an amazingly accurate translation for a children's Bible. International Children's Bible, right? Here you go. And then we'll wrap it up. Here it is. International Children's Bible. I can give you more but because I'm amazed. It's for children, but the translation is so good. It's so superb. We should be reading. So let's become children again. Because what did our Lord say? Matthew 18, 1 to 14. Matthew 19, 13 to 15. We must be converted and become like children in order to receive the kingdom. Because the kingdom belongs to children. Now watch their translation. Amazing. Colossians 1, 15, 18. We're done. No one has seen God, but Jesus is exactly like him. Beautiful. Christ ranks higher than all the things that have been made. Beautiful. Who would have thought? An international children's Bible produced for children would capture the force of the Greek superbly because they're spot on. That's exactly what the meaning. Through his power, there you go, you see? All things are made. The power of Jesus. Things in heaven and on earth. Things seen and unseen. All powers, authorities, lords, and rulers. All things were made through Christ and for Christ. Christ was there before anything was made. Tell me this is not a mind-blowing translation. It captures the Greek perfectly accurately. This is phenomenally accurate. So let's be children to be worthy of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's read this translation. Now watch. Christ was there before anything was made. And all things continue because of him. Because he's the one sustaining it. Now notice verse 18. 
He is the head of the body. The body is the church. Everything comes from him. And he is the first one who is raised from, the, from death. So in all things, Jesus is most important. What a beautiful translation. I may give you a final one. Let's see. Let me see this. Yeah, this one. Final one, brethren. Final one. And that's it. Let me give it to you. This is J.B. Phillips New Testament. Final one. These are, in my estimation, the best paraphrases of the Greek of Colossians 1, 15, 18. J.B. Phillips was a scholar of the Greek New Testament. There's a link to his translation. It's all on BibleGateway.com. Let me quote it. He, he, let's quote it all the way to 20. Colossians 1, 15 to 20, and we're done. Okay, let's, let's begin. And we're done. Phillips, New Testament, J.B. Phillips. Christ is the visible expression of the visible God. He existed before creation began. You see how they're telling you what firstborn means? Not the first one created. For it was through him that everything was made, whether spiritual or material, material seen or unseen. Now watch. Through him and for him also were created power and dominion, ownership and authority. In fact, every single thing was created through and for him. He is both, both the first principle and the upholding principle of the whole scheme of creation. And now he's the head of the body, which is composed of all Christian people. Life from nothing began through him. And life from the dead began through him. He's first born over death because he conquered it by destroying it by his resurrection. See? And he is therefore justly called the Lord of all. Supreme over everything. It was in him that the full nature of God chose to live in physical bodily form. That's what he means. And through him, God planned to reconcile in his own person, as it were, everything on earth and everything in heaven by virtue of the sacrifice of the cross. Game over. Good news translation. International Children's Bible, J.B. Phillips New Testament. We're done. 